Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we review what was covered in week two. So we looked at expanding and factorizing. So expanding is when you start with brackets like these and you end up with something that doesn't have brackets. Factorizing is the exact opposite. You start with an expression that has no brackets, you end up with something that has brackets. When we factorize, we write an expression as something times something. So if you expand an expression and factorize it, you're back where you started. Expanding and factorizing undo each other, just like multiplication and division. You know, if you multiply number by four, then divide by four, you're back where you started. So let's first look at expanding. So the way we expand brackets like this is using FOIL. So the FOIL stands for first, outsides, insides, last. So when we're doing something like this, the F means we multiply the things that occur first in each bracket. So x times 1 just gives us x. So that's first. So outside, the thing on the outsides of each bracket. So x times not 2x, but negative 2x. x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. Then i, the thing on the insides of each bracket. So here that's negative 5 times 1, which is negative 5. And then finally, l is the thing last in each bracket. So negative 5 times negative 2x gives positive 10x. So we just need to simplify because we have two like terms. Remember, x squared and x are not like terms because this has two x's, this one doesn't. But x and 10x are like terms. So what we end up with, we'll leave the negative 2x squared alone. It has no like terms, but x plus 10x is 11x. And then we can leave the negative 5 alone because it also doesn't have any like terms. So this is our final answer and we're done. So sometimes you'll be asked to expand something like this. So this is x minus 4 squared. So remember squaring means you multiply something by itself. So here we're multiplying x minus 4 by itself and we can use FOIL just like we did for the previous question. So f, the thing first in each bracket, x times x is x squared. Then O, the thing on the outside of each bracket, x times negative 4 is just negative 4x. Then I is also negative 4 times x, the thing on the inside of each bracket. And then last, the thing that's last in each bracket, negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. So once again, we have to look if there are any like terms. These two terms are like terms. So we're going to leave the x squared alone. It has no like terms. Negative 4 subtract 4 is negative 8. So these two terms can be combined because they're like terms and we'll leave the 16 alone. It has no like terms and then we're done. All right, let's look now at the opposite of that, which is factorizing. So we need to be able to factorize quadratics. A quadratics is an expression with an x squared term. So all of these ones down here, they are quadratics because they have an x squared term. So how do you factorize them? Well, unfortunately, it depends on the type of quadratic, whether the quadratic has two terms or three terms. If the quadratic has three terms, there's only one method, the sum and product rule, which I'll go through in a second. If you have a quadratic that has two terms, you need to ask yourself, is there a common factor. If there is, use the highest common factor method. If there's not, use difference of two squares. So let's look at each of these quadratics. Each of them has two terms. So this first one has one, two terms. So we ask ourselves, does it have a common factor? Does this term and this term have something in common? Well, they both have a common factor of two and they both have an x. So the answer is yes. They have a common factor. We use highest common factor method. So this is how you do highest common factor method. You write the highest common factor out the front. Here it's 2x. 2 is the highest number that goes into both of those and they both have an x in common. So then we say inside the brackets, what do I times by 2x? X to get 2x squared. Well, you need to multiply by x. What do you multiply by 2x to get 4x? It's just positive 2. And then we're done. So if I expand this, I get this. So let's look at this next one, 10x negative 25x squared. So two terms again. Do they have a common factor? Well, yes, they both have an x. They also have a common factor of 5. So we're going to use highest common factor method. So highest number going into 10 and 25 is 5, and once again, they both have an x. So what do I times by 5x to get 10x? Well, that's just 2. 
What do you times by 5x to get negative 25x squared? Well, you need to multiply by negative 5 to get the negative 25, and you need another x to get the x squared. So once again, if I expand this, I get that. So let's look at this one, x squared minus 36. It's a quadratic because it has an x squared term. It has one, two terms. But see here, there's no common factor. x squared and negative 36 do not have a common factor. So we're going to use dots, difference of two squares. It's a perfect square minus a perfect square. This is how you do the difference of two squares. You get two brackets, square root the first, square root of x squared is just x. Square root the second, square root of 36 is 6. One bracket gets a plus, one gets a minus. It doesn't matter which bracket gets the plus one, which one gets the minus. If I expand this using FOIL that we learned on a previous slide, I would get that. Let's look at the last example, 9x squared minus 100. There are no common factors. There's no number other than 1 that goes into 9 and 100. And note, both terms don't have an x. So since this has two terms, 9x squared negative 100, there's no common factor. We use difference of two squares. So we set up two brackets. So we square root the first. So the square root of 9 is 3, square root of x squared is x. So we've square rooted the first term. Now we square root the second, square root of 100 is 10. One bracket gets a minus, one gets a plus, doesn't matter in which order you write it. So there we are, we're done. So what about if a quadratic has three terms? Well, we use the sum and product rule. When you're doing these, you set up two brackets, kind of like difference of two squares and we put an x in each bracket. Now, what goes with the x? We need two numbers that multiply to the constant term and add to the middle term. They multiply to the number that's by itself and add to the coefficient, the number in front of x. So the two numbers that multiply to six and add to five, six doesn't have that many factors, so hopefully you can see it's two and three. Two plus three is five, two times three is six. So let's look at this one here. So here, we want the same thing. We're going to have two brackets, and we're going to put x in both brackets. We want two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to negative 2. So here, both numbers are the same. They're both negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, so they multiply to 1, and negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. So you might see it written like this. Rather than writing x minus 1 times itself, we can write it as x minus 1 squared. Either way, it doesn't matter. All right, let's look at this last one. This one's a bit tricky. Here, we now want two numbers that multiply to negative 32 and add to negative 4. So negative 32 is a bigger number. We're still going to set our brackets up like this. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through factors of 32 and see if I can get any that add to 4. So let's look at 32. So 32 and 1 isn't going to work. 16 and 2 isn't going to work. No way I'm going to get to 4. But 8 and 4, they differ by 4. So how am I going to figure that out? How am I going to get them to add to negative 4? Well, if I make the 8 a negative and the 4 a positive, that will work. See, negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. So once again, if you expand this using FOIL, you'll get where you started with. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.